have the pleasure to be here with Ms. Parminder Veer, uh, Chief Executive Officer of the Tony Alumula Foundation. We wanted to ask you a little bit, since you had a session right now about entrepreneurship, um, one of the biggest obstacles to entrepreneurship is the government. How can entrepreneurship in turn try to hold the government at a higher standard? I think um, the government isn't an obstacle for entrepreneurs and entrepreneurship. Um, they, uh, they are a challenge and an opportunity for entrepreneurs to bring solutions to government's challenges. Yeah? So I think the way that entrepreneurs can um, hold the government to account is by being successful entrepreneurs, successfully bu building their businesses, um, provide bringing solutions to the challenges that the governments are facing. There's too much talk about that the government must provide answers to every problem. Well, actually they can't, yeah? The government is made up of human beings, yeah? But the entrepreneurs can provide, can see the gaps and can see the challenges and turn them into, into opportunities. And I think that's what entrepreneurs across Africa are doing. Besides entrepreneurship, what is the one thing that still keeps um, Africa back to go further? Um, no. Entrepreneurship, unlocking and harnessing the creativity and the innovation of 670, 17 million young people of, of working age is a huge opportunity. Yeah? So entrepreneurs are the, the lifeblood of, of the growth of Africa, the economic growth of Africa. I think in terms of what, you know, what is preventing, I mean, I guess, what is, um, you know, maybe stifling their growth, the entrepreneurs and small businesses, is some of the, I guess, the challenges of doing business in many of the African countries. Infrastructure, power, the internet, um, regulation, the ease of doing business. But many of these things are fixable. And certainly the private sector and, and, the, and the public sector, the governments and the private sector, are beginning to address these issues systematically. So to sum it up, we can say that giving those um, things to entrepreneurs, we could, you could have as Africa a bright future to grow, to go further. Absolutely. Investing in an entrepreneurial and building an entrepreneurial class through skills development, through providing mentors who've been through the baptism of fire as, as entrepreneurs, to really building a Pan-Africa network that entrepreneurs, where do entrepreneurs learn? They learn best from other entrepreneurs, yeah? And building that Pan-African entrepreneurial network, which is what we're doing through the Tony Olumulu Foundation and the Tony Olumulu Entrepreneurship Program. And then also taking the risk with investing, providing seed capital, that allows entrepreneurs to develop a, you know, a proof of concept of their business idea. So for me, that is the, the, the foundation, the bedrock of building and growing an entrepreneurial class of entrepreneurs across Africa. And through the program in just 2015 and 2016, we've, we're, you know, we're, do, we're building 2,000 entrepreneurs across 54 African countries in three of the colonial languages, um, Anglophone, um, Lusophone and Francophone. And, and you know, and that is, there is no other program that can really speak um, about, of, you know, having that kind of scale of ambition that the Tony Illuminati Entrepreneurship Program has. It's great to hear that so much is being done right now to give the entrepreneurs those tools. A little bit of last question regarding our topic this year, regarding growth. Would you think that the growth debate is a rich world's problem? Many of these debates that take place about the emerging markets in the developed world are, are rich, rich world's problems, right? Um, because many, you know, growth is absolutely essential and economic growth, um, which will then make social impacts, yeah, is absolutely essential for all of the emerging economies. In my own lifetime, as someone who was born in India and then grew up in the UK, I have seen the economic transformation of my own country, India. And that is because they pursued um, growth strategies, economic growth strategies for India's re-emergence. China is another. 
and that is also happening in many of the African, of many of the 54 African countries. So, you know, I mean, I was thinking when I was participating in the debate, you know what, this is your problem. These are your fears. You mustn't project those fears on countries and, and continents that are trying to drive the economic growth of those nations. And you know why it's important for them to do that? 617 million work, young people of working age is not, uh, is, is, is a huge challenge to manage. You know, are they going to be job creators or are they going to be job seekers? And many of the African countries in particular and other emerging markets are really trying to ignite the entrepreneurial and unleash the entrepreneurial creativity and ingenuity of its young people to say, you know what, you can be job creators. Great. Thank you very much for your insights. Thank we you. really hope to see um, the impact that the foundation does and to see African entrepreneurs in power. And from the foundation, we want to say thank you to St. Gallen Symposium for extending this very generous invitation to exposing us to such an extraordinary network and, 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 and young minds, the students and who are the future leaders of the world. Thank, Thank you, you very much.